Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on Graves' ophthalmopathy. Graves' ophthalmopathy describes a number of eye signs present in Graves' disease. And as the name suggested, it is associated with Graves' disease. For general mechanism, Graves' ophthalmopathy is due to immunoreactivity against thyrotropin receptor, including autoantibodies. Dysregulation of normal orbital fibroblast function occur, due to this autoimmune immunoreactivity. I will explain about the eye signs and their mechanism later in this video. For pathophysiology, in Graves' disease, antithyroid receptor antibodies are produced. These antibodies act on thyroid, receptors in orbital tissue, and orbital fibroblasts. When stimulated by thyroid autoantibodies and cytokines, fibroblasts proliferate and produce large amounts of hydrophilic hyaluronan, a type of glycoaminoglycan that attracts and sequesters fluid. At the same time, a subgroup of fibroblasts differentiates into mature adipocytes. This results in the enlarged ocular muscles and orbital fat pads, seen in patients with Graves' ophthalmopathy. In addition to this, stimulation of insulin-like growth factor receptor on orbital fibroblasts, results in the recruitment of more activated T-cells and immune cells. This further stimulates existing fibroblasts to produce prostaglandin E2 and hyaluronan, which accumulate between muscle fibers making them larger. Activated immune cells also produce proadipogenic substances that stimulate the maturation of more adipocytes, which expands tissue volume even further. Then, the pressure within orbital cavity increases, affecting eye function. Let's look at the eye signs in Graves' ophthalmopathy. Upper lid retraction occurs due to excess thyroid hormone, causing increased sympathetic stimulation of the superior tarsal muscle, which is also called the Mueller's muscle. Overactivation of the levator muscle as it contracts against a tight inferior rectus muscle. Scarring between levator and surrounding tissues does not allow for normal closure of the eyelid. This picture shows upper lid retraction in the left eye of the patient, where we can see the upper part of the sclera. Von Grief's sign is when the eye moves down, the eyelid does not follow smoothly but at a slower rate. Lagophthalmos is the inability to close eyes. The mechanism of both is likely due to a combination of factors contributing to upper lid retraction. As mentioned previously, Abadie's sign is the spasm of the levator palpebrae when retracting the upper eyelid. Dalrymple's sign is the widening of palpebral fissure. Retraction of the eyelids on outward stare so that the palpebral opening is unusually wide. For its mechanism, it can be due to proptosis of the eye, so difficult for eyelid to cover whole eye or due to overactivation of levator and Mueller's muscle, causing upper lid retraction and hence widening of palpebral fissure. Next is the Griffith's sign, which is lower lid lag on upward gaze. This is most likely due to overactivity or sympathetic stimulation of nerves supplying the lower eyelid, with or without mechanical restriction of muscles involved in eyelid closure. Stellwag's sign, infrequent and incomplete blinking, often accompanied by Dalrymple's sign, Normal blinking is mainly controlled by the orbicularis oculi and levator palpebrae, with Mueller's muscle to assist in eye widening. Excess stimulation and overactivation of Mueller's muscle and levator palpebrae due to high levels of thyroid hormone causes the opening element of blinking to be accentuated. Another eye sign is diplopia, which means the patient has double vision. It is due to inflammation, swelling, and eventually fibrosis of the extraocular muscles. These do not allow efficient conjugate eye movements, which normally maintain corresponding visual objects on the retinas of both eyes. Ballet's sign is the restriction of one or more extraocular muscles. The mechanism is due to lymphocytic invasion, inflammation, and edema. These lead to fibrosis and scarring of the ocular muscles. Restriction of the range of movement follows. Chemosis is swelling or edema of the conjunctiva. Venous compression and decreased venous drainage are likely to contribute. Inflammatory cell infiltrate may also play a role. Chemosis is also seen in reactions to allergies and foreign bodies. Gaze limitation, where the normal range or field of vision is decreased. Inflammation, swelling, and eventually fibrosis, restrict the range of movement and contraction of the extraocular muscles. The eyeball cannot move as much and vision becomes limited. Sight loss, might occur due to progressive swelling of surrounding tissues. This raises the orbital bony cavity pressure to a point at which the optic nerve is compressed or damaged and vision is impaired or lost. Periorbital fullness is primarily due to decreased venous drainage from venous compression in the orbital space, leading to swelling of veins and capillaries and edema. Proptosis, also called as exophthalmus, is the forward displacement of the eyes. 
This is due to swelling of the ocular muscles, fat pads, and tissues within the bony cavity, pushing the eyeball forward. Riesman's sign is described as a bruit heard over the closed eye with a stethoscope. This is due to increased blood flow through the orbit caused by hyperdynamic state. For sign value of these eye signs, 25 to 50 percent of patients with Graves' disease suffer from one or more eye-related features. 3 to 5 percent of patients suffer from severe eye disease. Up to 70 percent of patients have subclinical eye disease identified on imaging. Many of the signs are very specific for underlying Graves' disease, such as lid retraction and lid lag. Lid retraction has a sensitivity of 34% and specificity of 99%, whereas lid lag has a sensitivity of 19% and specificity of 99%. That's all for this video. Thank you.